So here we have a van looking at a wall, a big blank white area, and another man who, by the way, he was just washing his hands or rubbing his hands for some reason before he came into view. Now these two men are planning, I think, to write on this wall. And here's my friend Rich. So suddenly my, my colleague Rich has appeared. I, I can tell it's rich, even though we can only see his back. He's fiddling about with his glasses, and they're all preparing, I think, to draw or paint on a wall. I have no idea why. I think this might be where Rich does his research quite a lot of the time, which is Chamba in India. Um, but they're, they're really looking very carefully at this, what looks like a huge sign that they're now even measuring and preparing to draw on. But it's difficult to know what they're deliberating because they're all turned away from us. And they're chatting about what they're going to do, looking very serious. This is obviously a very important task. And they're wrestling with all the little details and measuring and thinking, oh, if it's this big and that big, oh, how's it going to look? I feel this is going to take a very long time. They're not rushing. They're taking this quite slowly. Oh my goodness, okay. This is a painter, and I think he's painting me with green eyes, which I like. Is that me?
सामने वाला बटन दबाना है श्री नीरज भाई को जिताना है नीरज भाई को जिताना है और हाथ के सामने वाला बटन दबाना है In India, it's, it's just this crazy, exuberant time with like election rallies, people dancing, music, uh, cars blaring with loudspeakers, shouting the slogans of the candidates, um, the convoys of cars following the, the candidates as they go to every single village to do a speech. Um, and it's just, just this amazing, sort of fascinating experience. And I got right into that, but I also got sort of bound up in it as well. So things would happen like I'd, I was photographing an election rally. It was one of the first rallies I'd, I'd um, photographed. And I went to meet the, um, the candidate uh, a couple of days later, and she asked if I would share some of the photos that I'd taken. And I, I was very happy to do that. And then two days later, I start seeing some of those photos I'd taken, which were being used on campaign posters. They were, post they were blown up to huge size and, p and put on around the town. Um, there were... There were stickers with this same picture on them, and I was thinking, that's my picture. Um, and I've, you know, I should have charged for this. Or if, if you know, that, that helps them be elected, you know, am I to blame if I help them sort of create this image of themselves that they like? So that was, that was one of the slightly strange things. It's really hard not to get sucked into these, uh, these whole processes, because it is such a carnival. क्या बात है ठीक है बहुत किया है
before I'd done research on shepherds and I felt that I became much more of a shepherd than I ever did uh, become a politician. So I think politicians remain an alien tribe, whereas um, tribal nomadic shepherds are, are much more familiar to me and I feel much more comfortable sometimes with them just hanging out with um, 400 sheep and goats on a hillside. Fiji, it's, it's the way the world should be. I think one of, the, uh, one of the former popes said that about Fiji on a visit. And it, 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 it's a real uh, tourist tagline, right, within Fiji. It has been for, for decades. Politically, it is so interesting because it's this microcosm of all the issues that as a political anthropologist and even as a person I'm interested in. Right, about identity, about terri territory, about sovereignty, um, about access to rights and status and power, and who belongs. And I think actually all of my research has always been, uh, the, the nub of it has always been about who belongs and who gets to say who belongs and in what way. And I think that stems very much from my experience growing up in like 1970s, 80s London um, and, and seeing how that changed. And, and again, over the years, wondering, am I, am I a Londoner? Am I British? But the, the key challenge is not to, not to bring your own biases to it and to try and understand where people are coming from. So, as I said, Fiji's got a history of colonialism. You know, it's had this kind of manufactured, multi-ethnic uh, kind of condition imposed on it and it's that struggle between indigenous identity and immigrant identity but it's not immigrant in the way that I or others are in the West for example because that immigrant community in Fiji is a, is a post-indentured community so this is post-slavery indenture and they have been living in Fiji for I think more than 120 years so there's a long lineage yeah, so again, that question of belonging, at what point do you get to belong? I'm a Londoner, that's how I identify. I have very little identity beyond being a Londoner and an immigrant, working class woman Indian, right? Um, academically, I always feel like uh, an interloper because I have this, this triple whammy of being Indian immigrant, second generation, working class and a woman. Uh, I shouldn't be here. How did I get here? Um, even in practical ways, if you want to go off and do, do research, you pay for something first and then you recover it in expenses. As a working class person, I've not always had access to funds that allow me to do that. I think it's, it's a, a good point about being an Indian. I'm seen as an English person. I think that brings me a huge amount of, of privilege and access that so I can get into places um, and do things and ask questions that. I wouldn't normally expect I could do. And that was one of the big changes. And one of the reasons I wanted to sort of study in my hometown and do research there was just to, to contrast that. It's a mystery. I don't know if they see me properly in a way. I think I'm kind of invisible in my environment. Maybe not after this film, but... Um, no, what I mean, um, I don't think much of them uh, thought about uh, doing research inside parliaments is not something very common, you know, at least in Brazil and I think in most countries. I don't feel uncomfortable around them, but I don't feel that I'm, I'm part of that group. I don't think I have the sort of the ability to, to sort of stick to a fixed manifesto or set of beliefs, you know, and I, I'm, I think as an anthropologist, I, I tend to sort of um, listen to different points of view and see value in each of them. I don't, I don't sort of say, okay, that's me, that's what I want to be. I don't want, I want to be in this club and all I'm going to do is, is fight that corner. And I, I don't think I could do that. I like moving between different clubs and listening to different positions and maybe finding common ground between them. That, that for me is more interesting. I think I'd be really good as a spad. I think I might, you know, a special advisor who um, is behind the scenes and is constantly trying to work out, you know, policy and, 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 and gossiping in a constructive way but with, like, you know, between government departments and 
I think that I think I'd be better at that. Power behind the throne. Or am I just letting myself off the hook? It would be very frightening to, to, to withstand the, the level of attacks that they do get, uh, especially on social media. Um, and, and your families get it as well. So it would be, yeah, it would be hard. And yeah, it was so different 50 years ago. 50 years ago, sure, you've got letters. But now that onslaught of, of really vile attacks um, is, is, is difficult to imagine. No, I've never thought of myself being a politician because I think I don't have the, um, the qualities and the will of devoting my life for something like that. Because I think it's a very hard job, very, very hard job. I think they work a lot, basically all the time. They worry a lot. They are always thinking about their activity, at least the ones I, I know and I research. And for women, I think is it's even much more demanding in terms of the public exposure and the questions people ask you that they will never think of asking a man. Um, no, I don't really, I don't want, I never thought about being a politician. I remember there were uh, three different MPs from three different political parties, you know, and there was the, you know, posed for the camera, and one of them photobombed. And I thought, God, that's so interesting. That's not something that you're used to thinking or seeing when you think about politicians doing this really important political, you know, work. I thought, God, that's so interesting. And then I got a few, a few little tidbits from, from people about, oh, yes, no, these two MPs who go hammer and tong at each other in the chamber were actually, you know, discussing things about their children and their health and advice, etc., or just hanging out. Somebody once said to me, no political party has anyone who agrees with more than about 40% of the policies. But it's in, in a way it's depressing, but in a way it's quite impressive those people are all managing to stay in coalition with each other, even though they have a high level of disagreement between each other. Because it's a team sport, politics. You know, I really respect people who can stick with the team, even though they really don't agree with quite a lot. And they, in a sense, the way they see it is they're kind of repressing their individual whim, is how they might describe it. One person described it to me. So, you know, you're really trying to say, no, actually to make the country work to make democracy work you have to just sort of you know go with the team and you pick the best leader you can and you're not necessarily going to agree with them but you you can't just constantly undermine them because that's not how it's not going to work but i would find that difficult i'm quite rebellious i i i find it very hard um to sort of just go with a whole package a dogmatic pat you know a pack an ideological ideological package i'm as guilty as every one of distrusting the government here in the UK and politicians generally. And I rail against, you know, things most of the time now, unfortunately. Um, and so it's really difficult for me to think of them as humans. There's so much emotion involved in living your own life within this political climate landscape with politicians trying to take away your rights and, and treating other people as less than human. And you, I, I don't know about it, but, but I get so enraged and I think a lot of us do. Yeah. In a way it's almost easier to be a bit more, not dispassionate, but a bit more distanced and find the human in the politician when it's someone else, when it's over, over there. So I'd be really, I mean, I think it'd be great if Fijian researchers try to study the UK Parliament. I'd love to know what they take away from that, um, because I definitely think they'd open my eyes up to something I've not considered. So maybe as a self-described 
cynical realist. I'm actually, I have this kernel of hope. And maybe that's what I just, what I try to do as a researcher. I try to find or think about finding the good. It may not be abundant, but it might just be there. Isn't that thrilling?